Today's video is brought to you by FlexiSpot. I've spent a lot of time talking about getting new lenses, gear, cameras, you know, the latest and the greatest and so forth. Not so much on what to get rid of. I'd like to talk about this. Hi everyone and welcome to Pal the Tech. This is the Zhang Yi Miticon Speedmaster 35mm f0.95 lens which retails for about $450. This was the very first manual lens I owned for Fujifilm's X-mount as well as the first time I really spent a considerable amount of time using an aperture of f0.95. It weighs in at 460 grams and it's extremely solid and well built. And because this is an all manual lens and by that I mean completely manual there are no electrical contacts whatsoever here you see that on the bottom nothing no information is being sent to the camera about EXIF data autofocus or anything as far as your camera is concerned there is no lens so because of this you cannot use any form of autofocus and you pretty much have to take notes or write down somewhere if you want to remember what your camera settings were used for a specific shot as they will not appear here in Lightroom after using this lens. But the big feature for me and the reason to own this all manual focus lens was the bokeh and background that you get from it. Opening this lens up to 0.95 aperture gives you an amazing amount of subject isolation and color rendition. Of course, this subject isolation in a lens that's manual like this comes at a cost, autofocus. There is no autofocus, as I mentioned. And when you're trying to, you know, open up the aperture to f0.95, trying to nail focus, particularly on subjects in motion, can be challenging. Now with Fujifilm cameras, there are two tools that you can use to help nail focus when using a lens like this. These are in addition to the MF assist options that you see right here, which I normally leave in focus peak highlight. I choose the red color and you can see as I'm rotating the focus ring what areas of the image are in focus and that helps make it a lot easier. Now the first of the tools, focus check, unfortunately will not work with any lens that doesn't communicate with the camera because the camera does not know when the lens is actually focusing. So for example if I put the 35 millimeter prime here, the Fujinon lens, now if I have the focus mode dial set to M for manual focus, the minute I go to rotate the focus ring on the lens, the camera will zoom in, right, to show me a magnified view of the focus. See, so watch this right now. I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna turn the focus ring on the lens. You see that? It just jumped. And then I can fine tune my focus by rotating the ring. But as I said, it does not work with a manual focus lens that doesn't have any electrical contact points on it. Watch, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the focus ring. See? not doing anything. So then I resort to the other tool called focus zoom. And that simply consists of pressing in on the rear command dial. Just like this, watch. There, you see that? And then I can fine tune my focus just like this. I can also zoom in just a little bit more once I'm already zoomed in by rotating the rear command dial like this, watch. Boom. It gives you a closer up view. I think most of you know about this one already. One thing you may not know is that your focus zoom feature will not work if your autofocus mode, right, is set to either zone or wide. If I try setting it to zone and then I press the rear command dial, nothing happens. It also will not work if the camera is in AFC focus mode. You either need to be in manual M focus mode, right? Or in S focus mode, but with single point only for that to work. Before we continue, I'd like to give a big shout out to today's video sponsor, FlexiSpot. Now I've done videos on FlexiSpot in the past and they are generally known for their awesome standing desks. But did you know that they also make ergonomic chairs as well? They have a brand new ergonomic chair pro that can be the perfect companion for those times when you want to put your standing desk into a sitting position. The new Ergonomic Chair Pro features both hard plastic and soft plastic that can automatically adjust to the back strength for the user according to their body weight. The bottom support of the chair is an aluminum alloy chassis and the entire chair is very sturdy and weighs just over 45 pounds. The chair comes in a single box and it's very easy to assemble and set up. I was able to do it in about 15 minutes. All the parts and the tools that you need are included. Now once assembled you get a 
a variety of different options for adjusting the chair's position and ergonomics. You can adjust the armrests both up and down, as well as forward and backward. The chair's height can also be adjusted, of course, as well as the seat depth and the backrest tilt with four-stop locking. The seat is sturdy and comfortable with a breathable mesh material. All in all, this is an awesome chair and a great companion for your FlexiSpot standing desk. <laughs> this is a great time to shop FlexiSpot products as FlexiSpot is having their member day savings going on right now over the next few days where you can save up to $100 off your purchase. I will have a link to their website with all the details where you can go check it out. And as always, thank you to FlexiSpot for both sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Now, even though this is a great lens with amazing background, I've decided that I'm gonna be selling it. As I've said before on this channel, if you are gonna start going below F1.0, with great wide open aperture sizes comes great responsibility, right? And I have found that time and time again, I would just struggle to get the correct focus. I would often miss the shot, and a lot of times this was due to my terrible eyesight. I even tried the black and white film simulation focus peaking tip to see if that would help. And to do that is simple, just put your camera in one of the black and white film sims, make sure that your MF assist is set to focus peak highlight, and I like to use red. And you'll notice that you can see much more easily the parts of your image that are in focus. But even that did not work for me, and I grew more and more frustrated when I would miss a shot with a much wider open aperture. Because this channel costs money to run, new gear, new batteries, replacing worn out items, etc., I decided after a lot of thought that it was time for this lens to go. At first, I really resisted this. And I think a number of photographers often do resist selling or trading in their older gear. You know, you create memories with your gear. It becomes an extension of your eyes or of your arms and of your vision. And yeah, it's hard sometimes to give it up. This particular lens has been around since before this channel, and it's a great lens, but my shooting style, and in particular my crappy eyes, just requires a greater depth of field or autofocus when I'm trying to nail subjects that are in motion. But above all else, being able to recognize that if an item of gear isn't being useful to you anymore or is actually actively causing you frustration and getting in the way of your creativity, then it's time to let it go. Again, no reflection on the quality of this lens, which is awesome, but it's a complete reflection on my shooting style and my patience level. Guilty as charged. You know, there's an old saying in business and time management, and that is, it's not what you focus on that matters, it's what you ignore. And I think with photography in particular, you could apply that and say, you know, it's not the gear that you acquire that matters, but often it's the gear that you let go of. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it the like and subscribe, and I will see you in a new video again very soon. Take care.